Ciao Juventini of the world. Ciao Juventini of the world. Ah. Federico Gatti. Adrien Rabiot. Arkadiusz Milik Wojtek Szczesny Stefano Castelli Softic Mr. Brzeid Paul Daniel Perone Sasha Cecilia Ramdim David Ciao Stavros Ciao Thomas Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, thank you, I know, I know there was no voice, but anyway, I am happy because it was a deserved win, we won 2-0, it was fantastic, it was important, a second half that was much better than the first one, even if in the second one, what are they calling, no, no I'm live, you know, <laughs> no, I can't just receive calls, I can't, I am live. I work, I'm sorry. No, because I receive calls. Don't know why. You can hear me now, yes or no? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Let me know if you hear me or not. Normally you should hear me. I don't agree uh, with uh, Golf Clash. Golf Clash is saying first half disaster. I don't agree. I don't agree. I don't agree. Uh, or we have another definition of the word disaster but i don't agree i don't agree no disaster is something else disaster is the second half of atalanta disaster is the way that we entered the field against lecce disaster is uh whatever you want to monza maccabi haifa yeah the first half was a juventus that was controlling that was smart that was managing but juventus that was absolutely not dangerous and that's not okay so of course in football there are moments where you have to manage but in 45 minutes if you are not dangerous and eh, no and eh, no because you have to be dangerous but i think that juventus entered well in terms of intensity in terms of pressing in terms of uh, dynamism in terms of going on contrast and not being scared i saw good things in the first half but until a certain moment where we were absolutely not dangerous. Juventus was not able to create something. Juventus was not able to go higher on the field with their men because we were quite low. So on that one, uh, no, that's not good. That it was kind of boring first half. Yeah, because we didn't create. I can agree with boring, with offensively not great, but disaster is something else. Anyway, I am super happy about the win <laughs> of today. It was a must-win game. It was a must-win, of course, because Torino, let's be honest, it's Torino, but you never know in a derby because a derby um, is felt by the players, by the Torino players, by the Juve players, especially the ones that are Juventini, like Emiretti, like the Fagioli, like Locatelli, or players that are there since long. They know Moise Ken, for example, they all know what it means. We come from, and don't forget that, from three games that were putting in doubt everything that Juventus did well from the beginning of this or the summer actually in training session in the preseason because the loss against Asuolo was disaster was humiliation then the Lecce win was absolutely not convincing the one 
draw of Atalanta was absolutely not acceptable and we were angry. Do you remember how much I was angry here on the channel because of that game? I was nervous. Today, we, we, we didn't know what Juventus would show up, how they would come with their head in a derby because, you know, if in the beginning of the game, Torino is taking the lead with a goal or the dominance with their game, it changed. But, you know, before doing the man of the match of the players that were on the field, I want to give a fantastic applause to the supporters today that were there present already at 3 p.m. Italian time. They were there in front of the J Hotel to already give that passion, that sharing of honor of attaccamento alla maglia. That means that you, you want, you are linked to that shirt. Um, the attachment to the shirt and they continue all afternoon long before the game, pre-warming when the players were entering the field until the first minute where we had that whistle and the 90 minutes of the game after the game. I want really to say a congratulation to the supporters, but all the stadiums led, of course, by the organized TIFO, the TIFO that was back with drums. And that's a fantastic news. For what reason? Because Juventus, they said it with President Ferrero. The war is over. Who was right? Who was wrong? We don't care. We put it aside. But that's the stadium that I want. That's the home that I want. I will go there for the next home game with my son. And I want to show him what is a stadium. What we are. I want Juventini to be there. And to sing. To applaud. To cheer for our team. I don't want to hear a silent stadium and when we miss a pass I want whistles from our own supporters this was the example of what we have to do what we have to be back to be Juventus singing chanting jumping that's what I want so I want to do a congratulation to that let me start saying thank you to all the people in the chat Rad that is saying with a fantastic beautiful donation thank you for the donation Rad congrats Bianconeri a win is a win but I want to speak about the beautiful things that we saw today and also the things that we have to do better you know it when we win at a certain moment I start to be even more pissed off on things that we have to do better but first we start with the emotions with the things I told you on Tuesday we have that game and I have a surprise for all the people that are watching here uh, by the way when we are losing we are with much more people and eh? when we are winning we see less Juventini but the surprise is <coughs> that on Tuesday there will be that black and white together night you know it with the legends that would play against each other Del Piero, Zidane, Platini, Trezeguet, Pirlo, Antonio Conte whatever player you want to they will be there present and I will do the watch along on YouTube Juventus so not this YouTube but Juventus YouTube I will be there before the game to present you the players I will uh, uh, do the watch along live reaction to what we are seeing on the field with a lot of anecdotes we'll try to have also some players that will enter uh, the live to speak with you and it will be in English so uh, I think that's a beautiful surprise. I could have been present, but at a certain moment when uh, I knew that we were able to transmit the game and they told me, Beppe, you can come as uh, a guest, a visitor being there, or you can do the watch along in English on YouTube. I said, oh, what do we do? You know, if we if we can interact with the Tifosi, which we, when, if I can explain the story, I really want to be there and to tell them. So I decided to be uh, there on YouTube instead of going. Of course, I wanted to be present, but being able to transmit that Juventinita, that 100 years ownership story with Juventina, I really want to do that. So that will be on Tuesday, Juventus channel, so be there. Sam, 11, no, six months with us, ciao, Sam, great win without our two best players. Ah, Hey, this is something I, we didn't even mention, but we'll come back on that, and I agree. Fans back in the curva, good intensity. Hunger was there, deserving of a derby. Forza Juve. Yeah, great analysis, Sam. Paul, uh, thank you for your double donation. Paul Enrico Costa Dimas, that is telling us Bremer is finally the Juve number three. Lol. It's true, it's true. We were waiting for it. The bandage is of course bringing us back to Giorgione Chiellini. We needed the Bremer like that to finally take Giorgio Chiellini and put him in his body, having the soul of Giorgio. So it was beautiful to see. A bit less for him, I believe, because I think that he received, you know, like these points uh, on the field immediately. But what I appreciated more from the game of Bremer was really the performance. 
really the performance that was really fantastic from our number three. Uh, let me read a bit of your comments before I start to analyze. First half, poor offensively or absent offensively. We had to do better in first half, but there were some things that I want to keep. And then the second half that was much better, even if also in that second half, we had to do some things better. So uh, yeah, yeah, live stream, uh, Mufi. Three best players were missing. That's the thing, Italian. I didn't want to mention it immediately because uh, uh, the description was correct. Two best players. But it's three. It's three. Because now we know it. Pogba counter analysis came back. Unfortunately, they were positive. So we will see what will be the future of Paul. But what we can say is that he's not part of Juventus for the remaining part of the season. Then what will happen, we don't know. Uh, about his personal level, but we are missing and a Paul Pogba and a Federico Chiesa and a Dusan Vlaovic today. At the end, we have a Federico Gatti that needed to make him for he was looking for forgiveness. And that uh, game of last uh, week against Atalanta was not bad from him from a defensive point of view, but we were waiting for more. And I believe that today he showed it and he went to celebrate with all the supporters. So Federico Gatti, beautiful goal. And then the one of Arkadiusz Milik that had no 90 minutes in the legs, but when he entered, he did it really great. That's how I want our subs to enter. But I also want to do a beautiful applause to uh, Moise Ken that uh, according to me played a really great game. I don't know you, but I think he deserves a really great game. If you want to give me the names of the people that we can put in the top four of today so that we can do a poll for the best of the of the match. Bogdan, ciao Juventini, ciao Bremer from Stavros. He was a wall, simply amazing. Eight months from Sir Raz with us. Great win after Atalanta and before Milan. Yildiz is crazy. He needs to start over Miretti. What a player. Um... Miretti was not a disaster, Miretti was not bad, but what I was blaming Miretti for in that first half, and that's why I wanted him to be changed at the 46th minute, was the fact that Miretti, we couldn't find him and he couldn't find Moiskin or the offensive players. So if you have a player that we can't find and he can't find the other ones, well, at a certain moment, uh, we have to take a decision because we needed something more creative, something more offensive. And that was the link that Milik was able to offer. I hoped that we scored a third goal to see Ken and Yilis, and why not a Dean Huysen earlier? It didn't happen. You know it, in football, you don't know how many injury time they will give more. Could have gone with 15 more injury time. So it's also difficult eh, because one more goal from Torino or one goal of Torino would have reopened that game. So I understand that you are managing, that you are waiting. But uh, especially with a Bremer that was dizzy at a certain moment but then he entered and in the few minutes that he enters you see that he's the player that is able to bring you that magic that enthusiasm that today the stadium found back but maybe we are missing that enthusiasm that is coming from the feet of a player from a player that is able to give you that ah, wow I know because I was waiting in the chat for that player to enter, but also the people in the chat on the Juve Twitch channel were waiting for that player to enter and they were saying, Yildiz, 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 we want Yildiz. He enters and already is able to create magic in a game, of course, in a moment of the game, of course, where the teams were a bit more with distance, were more open, where you had a bit more space than in that first half. So, but I believe also Weston McKennie did well eh, as a center midfielder. Thank you for the eight months, Sir Raz. Rada, thank you for the nation, my buddy. Gatti is a player you can't have grudge against. Grinta all the way. <coughs> well done, Gatti. <laughs> you know that my sometimes blame about Gatti, but when I spoke with Locatelli live, it's a bit the same that... Uh, and Allegri sees in him and the player sees in him that sometimes he's going out of control and he's risking a lot, taking the ball, going up, going immediately on one-on-one -on -one with a full of aggressivity. And that's what we love from him because that's what we love. That's what we need in a team that needs a bit of that leadership, that character, but sometimes it can create some spaces. I will show you immediately what I saw today and what I showed actually uh, uh, pre-game. It was this. 
wait, uh, Rad, I will take your comment away a second so that we are able to see it a bit more. So these are the starting lineups. And uh, uh, the starting lineups, I, I was, you know, it, I always said Gatti and Wea together on the same side can be potentially dangerous. Why? Because if Wea is going up and you have a Gatti that is going up, you leave all that side alone. And that's why I was absolutely not surprised when I saw that, okay, we test Wea and Gatti together for the first time here, but we put a Weston McKenney. Why? Because the role of Weston McKenney was that when Wea was going up, if Gatti was going up, Weston McKenney was the one that was really taking that spot in certain games. You saw it huh? a lot of time when Gatti took the ball and he, when he, go, he went up, you saw Weston, he was not doing what he's usually doing. That means when he's playing as a center midfielder, going and trying to put density in the box. He was actually pairing Gatti on the same height, understanding what he was doing. If Gatti went back because he did a pass, McKenny stayed there or he gave a bit of support. If Gatti went with the ball higher, then McKenny was taking his spot. And I believe that's the real reason why Weston McKenny played instead of Fajoli today to give a bit this. But also Wea, he was really alert because at a certain moment, I really saw Wea here giving Weston McKenny the right to stay as a midfielder. So I saw things tactically better on that right side. Do I think that now we are ready to see Gatti and Wea from the start? I start having a bit more hope. I am still a bit doubtful, but I have more confidence. But with the Western McKenny, it can happen. So the importance of McKenny tactically was important for also another reason. The last time when we played with two strikers, let me take a striker, Federico Chiesa. I will just put here and with McKenny, he, uh, he was uh, here. Anyway, we don't care. The last time when we played, what was the tactical plan? The last time was that in ball possession, Rabiot and Locatelli became two midfielders with Miretti that was behind the strikers, okay? That was the plan. The problem against Sassuolo, uh, that was the plan. But the problem against Sassuolo is that Sassuolo was putting a lot of density here, so Miretti you were losing Miretti because Miretti was actually trying to give support here on that right side. And Chiesa and, I believe, uh, Vlaovic or, uh, uh, or I don't remember, they were isolated alone up front and there was no link anymore in that midfield because Miretti, because of the pressure of Sassuolo, was obliged to go here. And that's why today Chiesa was not there. You have a Western McKenny so that Miretti was not forced to go here. The problem was defensively, it was working really well. Offensively, Rabiot was not in his game the first half. Locatelli, yes, but more prudent than uh, he should be. And Miretti was there and Keen here, isolated up front. And that was a pity. That was about the tactical talks. Now I want to read your comments and I want also to say thank you to, uh, again, Rad for the donation, but also for the 14 months from Daniele Perrone. Happy for the win. I thought Wea had a good game. I really appreciate it, Wea. Really appreciate it, Wea. Let me read who you have put in the top four. I see Wea and I want to say congrats to Wea. I want to put him in the four men so that you can choose. So, man of the man, man of the man, man of the match, Wea. I see, uh, I want to put there uh, I want to put Bremer. I want to put also the one that scored today. Uh, what's his name? Gatti. And I want to put... It's difficult. I can only put four. And I think that more deserve. McKenny Locatelli deserved. Should I put Milik? Uh, Milik had a big impact also. Huh? Bah, he scored. It's di today is difficult. So I put four players. I could have put more. I'm sorry, guys, but it is what it is. But I agree with you. Wea played really well, giving velocity and speed on the right side of the field. Also, Danilo played well. I agree. I agree. Lolo Panza. Thank you for your beautiful donation, my friend. With a, a papyrus. You know, the youngsters today, they are saying, mucho texto. I will, not, uh, I will not read it, but I am not young. I am old. So I take my time to read the comment of Lolo Panza. Beppe, tell me if you agree with me. Today we played well. Yes, I agree. Beyond winning. I agree. Because our best players that I love didn't play. Ah, attenzione. 
It allowed the rest of the team to follow the rhythm and I think collectively. Mm. Eh, sorry guys, I'm distracted because my wife is doing the, the cooking and I have no idea what she's cooking, but I think she's cooking something good because it smells really great. Eh, the wife is cooking. It smells really great. Okay, so what, what is Lolo saying? Sorry for that. Uh, <coughs> Lolo is saying, we didn't play well because Chiesa and Vlaovic didn't play, so we had actually to step up with all our team not counting on the one that scored already eight goals in the beginning of the season we were and we we had to step up all together and all collectively in a way i agree that a game like that when you know that Kesa and vlaovic are not playing you have to step up because you have more responsibility and you know that each of you has to give something more on that one i agree then i will never i will never sacrifice Kesa and vlaovic i mentally for the beginning of the game or how you prepare the game probably yes then on the field at a certain moment you know i would have preferred still Kiesa and Vlaovic i think that with Vlaovic and Kiesa would have probably be better also in that first half where it was quite difficult but uh yeah I, mentally preparing the game i kind of agree with you lolo but uh i die 50-50 Pino, grazie Pino. Gatti needed that goal and I like the pace of Wea. And West right side was strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 triangle the triangle there was fantastic. I agree with you. At the moment Bremer is winning. Oh, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that that at the moment Bremer would win uh, the man of the match. It's at the moment. Huh? A lot of credit for Maxenheimer, Otman. Uh, thank you for your message. Maverick, Beppe, what's the surprise that you got for us, Juventini, during the 100 friends? Oh, well, um, I said it. I will just recap in a few seconds for the people that are joining maybe now and didn't hear the beginning of the scene, uh, of the, the video, of the live. So uh, I could have had the choice to be a guest there live at the 100 uh, years, or I could stay home and uh, going live on YouTube for the live reaction watch along. Uh, for the people that are not living in Italy, so abroad of Italy, we will be able to show the game and I will be there interacting. And I think it's just fantastic that uh, people will ask, where can we watch the game, Del Piero Zidane, etc., etc. And I will be able to be there with you. So I'm super happy. I don't, I don't know if you're happy or not. But otherwise, it was not possible to watch it on television. Impossible. So I think it's a fantastic news for a Juventini that wants to live una serata bianconera, a blank, black and white evening. Takishi! Oh, I forgot to say thank you to Takishi because I saw it in the, in the chat at a certain moment. Takishi that offered one membership and it went to Haitam Charara. Thank you, Takichi. Thank you, Takichi, for the offered membership can we have a bit more maximum of likes G guys 121 i think that we can go higher uh, let's see i think that we can go higher loca was a hidden soldier okay who can guess but i need it faster because otherwise you will cheat i know that how many balls were touched by manuel locatelli i will anticipate you he was the one that touched most the balls today how many touches for Manu Locatelli? Who can tell me? Kostic was good. Yeah, second half. Second half, Kostic was good. Uh, 45, 86, 91, 102, 80, 102, 70, 86, 86. Okay, the last update I have is 82 balls touch. Could be that on another app it's uh, 86. Maybe, you know, it will be adapted later. But here on the official Opta site, I have 82 balls touched by Manuel Locatelli with a pass accuracy of 86. Uh, you can see it here. Huh? Uh, 11 passes. So the most passes in final third that's good and also precision was quite okay in final third something that i'm asking to our players second one was federico gatti with 65 then you had danilo rabio with 54 but locatelli was really involved in today's game and i want to go and watch a bit 
how our team play today in terms of average position. Black dots for Juve, purple dots for um, Torino, Juventus up. Quite low average block. This is not how we were positioned, but when we touched the ball. So where did we touch the ball the most? And you see that we were quite low with one, two, three, four, five players of Torino over our midfield line. Only three players, Keen, actually, McKenny and Wea, that were a bit more higher, but really far from the goal so in average block this is something that was a step behind and i don't really like it and this translates and tell us also why we were not really dangerous up front our goals i take them huh? because i don't understand why people are always complaining when the goals are coming from uh uh from set piece i don't care huh? Grazie, give them to me. If we can win the Serie A Scudetto with only set pieces, I take them. So I will never blame a goal is a goal, ragazzi. Eh? <laughs> but, but it's true that if you want to speak about dangerosity, we were not dangerous also because we played quite low. A real three men in the back with Gatti. You see how high Gatti is? Look at that triangle. We are. McKenny Gatti, look at that triangle that you can see here. Bremer was in the back. You have a bit more defensive support from Danilo. And Kostic was the one that was man marking Belanova a bit lower than Wea. Okay? So three men that can in non possession become a four man, even if Kostic was not that low. And then a Locatelli that was a real regista today with Miretti. You see how much difficulties Miretti had to create something offensively because the 45 minutes of Miretti were in our half more than up front. Rabio here. So compact midfield. If you're looking at the subs, look at here. You see more advanced subs. Yildiz but he played a few minutes, but especially Milik. So you see that here, here is Miretti, here is the half of Milik. So in that second half, we were more dangerous and our strikers were able to touch more balls up front. Okay? We have more stats that I will go through in a second, but let me check. Milan won the Scudetto by penalty kicks a few years ago. And they had a lot, huh? I remember my jet. Disaster performance for the goalkeeper Vanya. Uh, he was not not good. He was not good. Uh, I didn't know that uh, a lot of Torino fans were hating on him because I don't care about the story of Torino and uh, what they are doing. But I heard it last week. The performance of today will not help him. Anthony Trimboli, King. Control on that uh, one aerial pass was fantastic. Hey, but you saw Moise again. Wait, because I received a message that I need to check. Oh. You want to watch something I show you really fast? You want to watch something I show you really fast? It's after the win of our kids. Because we played this morning, we won. Look. Anyway, anyway, uh, that's that's obliged. When we win, we win. We have to celebrate. I uh, know because I don't like it's normal. We win, we go in the locker room, we do the shower, we go home. No, we have to celebrate. A win is a win. A win is a win. We have to teach them from young, from young. Sha la 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 la. Eh, no, today we won. You see, it's not jokes. Uh, what I'm telling you. Anyway, these are the things I love. I love to do. I was happy because I didn't see the video yet. I didn't even know that I was a. Uh, uh, I just need to answer you, Juve. Yeah. <laughs> 
just me, Stan. Eh, best stadium atmosphere in years. Which one? The one of the locker rooms or the one in the stadium? Yeah, of course. Uh, allowing the drums, it makes the entire difference. And Tariq, it makes the entire difference. Of course. Of course, it makes the, the, the difference. And I hope now it's not a one shot because it was the derby. I hope we can see it even more. I hope we can see it also for Verona, also because I will be there. So I really, I really, really want it. Um, beautiful. That means a lot for it. Oh, yeah. Mean. Ciao BT, I didn't even say hello to BT today. Um, agreed, I see no improvement for Miretti, he should go on loan or something. No, now we need him. Oh, ragazzi, you know that Pogba has just been uh, uh, tested uh, now officially also positive. So we don't have a lot of midfielders. Uh, Nicolucci didn't start yet or not even a single minute this season. So at the moment you have Rabiot that the next yellow card will be uh, suspended. Luckily, today... No yellow card for him, so he will be there against uh, Milan. I probably I will not even see Rabiot at the stadium. <laughs> probably will have a yellow against Milan. I will not see him against Verona. But anyway, I don't care. The team is more important than uh, who I will or I will not see. Maybe I will be there for the first game of Nicolussi. But we have Rabiot, Locatelli, Miretti, Fagioli, Nicolussi. And actually today we have a Weston McKenney. More, because today he showed that he can play that position Big growth tactically from Weston. Eh? One of the players that improved the most tactically. And you know what I was blaming Weston when he was playing at Juve? He couldn't do two things in simultaneously. Or he was good technically. I mean, going up, entering the box, uh, beautiful extensions for the headers, <coughs> aggressive on the ball, you know, technically individual player. But then he was a disaster tactically. And when he was doing really attention to play tactically as he should, he was really bad in all the individual things. This season I see a Weston McKenney that is trying and progressing in the two things. And that's important. Especially if you want to play for Max Allegri, you need to do both things. Otherwise, it's a disaster. Uh, Ciao, Ramtin. Beppe, who's your preferable midfield trio for Juventus right now? It deep. <laughs> I know eh, it's difficult uh, what I'm telling. And by the way, TikTok clips, benvenuto, welcome. I know it's difficult what I will tell you. But for me, I don't have a starting midfield. But it can be from whatever players. Eh? Because I'm always looking at the opponents, but also about who is playing. For example, with Gatti, I told you that I didn't want to see Wea at the moment until he would have been ready. Well, if tactically today you give me a, a McKenny at protection, we, they can play together. And then McKenny makes sense in the trio of midfielders. Miretti is a player, you know, I like, I still believe in, I believe a lot in Miretti, but one day I would love to see him really playing 90 minutes in a role of Mezzala, left, right, whatever, but as a Mezzala and not as a support for the striker or with tacticalities that are telling him that he has to play between the lines, creating that, you know, it's tough, huh? so... Uh, Miretti in that position still shows signs of difficulty and then I would not play Miretti. But a Miretti that is playing his position, why not? Fagioli is a player I like and I believe uh, he can be a starter. Um, Rabiot and Locatelli, they are the starters. So it's, you know, it's uh, Rabiot, Locatelli and then you, depending how you play, you change. I know it's not the answer that you want, huh? but I have difficulties. Um... I have difficulties. Yash, just as you always appreciate the victory, but the game today against Torino was a disaster. We are way better than them. Uh, you know that when we win, I am a bit more critical. What I didn't like, I tell you immediately, first of all, we are better than them. And I agree, with or without Kies and Dusan and Pogba, we are better than them. So the win was obliged. Jen, in football, you, you never know. Huh? You hit three posts or whatever, you have bad luck, you have a red card in the beginning and the game can change. But in the conditions that we were today with a fantastic stadium that was really the 12th man, uh, with the people at disposal, also with a lot of missing players for Torino, because we don't speak about it, but they are missing a lot of players that are also injured. So it's not only you, but it's also the opposition team. <laughs> then, of course, we had to win. So, the 2-0 the, the is not something, wow, fantastic. No, we had to, and we did the job. 
And then in the first half, I'm expecting, and I agree with GHD here, that we are able to play even without Chiesa and Vlaovic in creating things. Because Chiesa and Vlaovic in a 3-5-2, they are there to finish the things. Maybe from the three quarter of the field to create something with Chiesa, but then to finish. If we don't have them, we should still be able to, to create. Then, if Moiskin is missing them, if Miretti is missing them, hey, amen. But we created. Today, in the first half, we didn't create. And our team was quite low. Uh, I didn't understand also, in the beginning of the game, look, this is how we ended. Much more present on the right side of the field when we tried to attack. But look at the beginning of the game. So you see that here, we go with a full power on the right side. At the 15th minute, 65% from our attempts, that were not a lot because you see that the, the line is quite thin, were on the right side at the 15th minute. Uh, at, the seventh, at the 18th minute, 65%. Then we start to, to also play a bit more on the left, but absolutely not enough. We finish that first half with nearly 50% on the right side. And what is happening when you try only there? That you are predictable that you are predictable. Second half, it doesn't change a lot. We play a bit more vert in center of the field, but still nothing on the left side. You see, and then from here, with some changes, we start also to give importance to the left part of the field. But the left side of the field was in York, and I'm expecting from a Juve that is able to play on the three sides, vertical, left and right. Then, if you are able immediately in the beginning of the game to score three goals like uh, versus Udinese, I don't care anymore. If you are not, and if you are trying to be dangerous, you should give attention. Look at the first half. Yeah, it's, it's not enough. It's not enough. So these are the things. Then, first half, not always really accurate. I didn't like it. I didn't even check how we ended in terms of uh, accuracy. I hope over 80%, yeah, 82, that's the same accuracy as Torino. With the quality of players that we have, we have to be over. I'm I told you, uh, my target of pass accuracy at the end of the game, total pass accuracy, should be over 86. Otherwise, I'm not happy. Should be over 86. My dream would be over 90. And then you have teams like Manchester United, Barcelona, they are over, are over 93, 94%. I'm not asking this in a first step, step by step, but I'm asking over 86. What, whatever is under 86, it's not great for me. Then pass accuracy in, in uh, opposition half, 71. It's low, it's low, better than 60, but it's still low. Not a lot of crosses. I was expecting a bit more from Kostic in the, the first half, but then in the second half, he's doing the job. Eh? Defensively and offensively. Then you see the attempts, 17 attempts for Juve, six times on target. On that one, I'm more happy, but it came also and only in the second half. In the first half, he, we had one shot on target. Do you remember what? Because I don't even know if I can uh, speak about shot on target. But who can tell me which was the shot on target from the first half? You will probably not even remember which one it was. I remember. And I don't know if we can call it a shot. Huh? But who, who remembers the shot on target from the first half? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Nobody? One, two, three. I will tell it myself. The one of Rabiot. <laughs> the one of Rabiot when he's trying to go with the right foot. Uh, grande Edza. Ra Edza was faster than me. So that shot on the with the right foot that is touching the left foot and then going on the on the goalkeeper. Yeah, the Rabiot slip. That's what that's it. Uh, AQM. Is it really a shot? Is it really a shot? Can we speak about the shot? No. So you see in a half against Torino, a poor Torino. Let's be honest, a poor Torino. We had to do better. Then in the second half, I see an Arkadiusz Milik that is entering. He's going three times on target. One goal. Three attempts, three times on target, one goal. Today, Arkadiusz Milik in second half. Fantastic, huh? That's why I've put him in the, in the top four of today's game. Gatti is trying to go two times on target. Uh, two shots, one on target. And it's the goal. Mamma mia, I was pissed off, huh? They were about to disallow it, huh? 
and I didn't understand because for me, it was a goal all day long. All day long, it was a goal because I see immediately that it's Tamedze that is going with a retro passage, a, re a back pass with a header. And then you have Moiskin that was probably even off site if you want to, but that retro back pass is canceling everything. Beautiful attempt, saved on the line and Gatti is there on that second ball. That's super, super, super important. Super important. And he was there with full of Grinta. And when they were about to cancel it, I was so pissed off. But really, yeah. I spoke about the... Uh, ah, can I nail this? Um, I don't know why I was reading Keen because I already spoke about Keen. Can I nail this? is a player that I follow since he joined Juve. Um... And that I like. I saw him also real life. So I'm super happy with that when he was playing with the under-19 youth league in uh, Champions Champions Youth League. I watched him playing. I spoke with him after the game that day. <laughs> it's a player that is uh, one of the only ones that is able to create enthusiasm to the fans. We want to see him. Uh, we want uh, to stand up for a player. A bit Federico Chiesa. Can you tell me, guys, who is the who are the players? And then I will continue with my debrief about Kenanildis. But who are the players at Juventus that makes you stand up from your chair and saying, do it. You can do it. You can create that magic. You know, I was, Paolo Dybala was a player like that. Alessandro Del Piero was a player like that. Platini, Zidane, Davids was a player like that. But in our team, who is that player that is... It will, something can happen. Chiesa, I agree. Fagioli, yes. Speaking about last season, because this season, except of two, two fantastic, beautiful controls, aerial controls that he's taking a battle with him. Chiesa, yet. Um, Fagioli, yet. Not yet. Fagioli is a player that when he's doing it, I'm not surprised because he, I know he has it, but I'm not expecting it from him immediately. Fajol is not a player that every time that the ball is coming from him, I'm expecting. Chiesa, yes. Chiesa, yes. But that's it, huh? Nah, Dusan, no. Dusan is expecting a goal. Dusan, Dusan, I'm expecting a goal. Dusan, I'm expecting that he's going uh, scoring, whatever. But you know that? La magia, the magic. Ealing, grande, David. Ealing. Ealing is another one. De Chilio. Yeah. But e Ealing is a player like that as well. Ealing, Ealing and Chiesa, if I'm watching the team, Ealing Chiesa at the moment, that doesn't mean they are better than the other ones. Eh? It means their technical abilities are Di Maria last season, even if we didn't see it enough, but Di Maria last season. Miretti had that in the youth academy, not yet with the first team. So Ealing and Chiesa, but we miss these players where a kid is wanting to have an autograph, a selfie, and putting the poster, you know, in a few years in the room. I don't even know if uh, people are still doing it, but uh, let's speak about, you know, the cover that you are putting on your phone. I put the temperature so I don't forget uh, what kind of temperature it is outside. But Yildiz, he has that. Yildiz has that magic. And that's why we want to see him. We don't know huh, how we will play with the first team because we saw him for a few minutes uh, until now. But he has that thing that we... We want, we see, and today he's entering. Okay, the teams were more open. You had more space. You are already winning 2-0. You have a few minutes. So even if you are doing a mistake, it's not as important as when you are doing it before. But you see, huh? you see that when he has the ball immediately, he's going with doppio passo, tac, tac, tac. He's going with change of direction, with anger, with enthusiasm, with passion, and with something that can... Put on the light. He can put on the light. And uh, yeah, I think I described well what I think about Kenan Yildiz. Huh? Then, does that mean that I want him as a starter every single game? No. Did I want him to see him a bit earlier today? Yes, at the end. It's the win that is important. But, um, but calma. 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 Because you know it, management of young kids that are arriving in the first team... Can be great, can be not great. Don't forget that it just has been called up for the national team of Turkey from Vincenzo Montella. And you know it, in the same week, you imagine, you start in the derby against Torino as a starter. Huh? Then 
you are called up with the national team of Turkey for the very first time, first team, huh? first team with the uh, seniors. Could be, could be a lot, a lot for a player, for a young player. So look, today we didn't need him. Maybe if we needed him earlier, we would have done it. We were winning 2-0. He still got his minutes. So I'm okay. I'm okay. But it's a player that I want to see with the first team. And when you see Max Allegri, how we speaking about him with the with the, the the brilliance in the eye. He had a humid eye. Can we say that? Humid of humidity, a humid eye. L'occhio umido, le humid. Can, can you say that? Is that the right word? Let me check. If we say humid, I don't know. Uh, Wet, uh, humid, uh, humid exists, but a wet eye, watery, you know, wet eye, you had the wet eye, wet eye, that's uh, something I say a lot in French, le humide, mamma mia, what a grinta, what a grinta, 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 grinta Gatti, hey, it's not a coincidence that Gatti and Grinta, they start with the same letter, this is what it is, uh, what else did, uh, did we post, Juve, Look at that. Gattone. Gattone with the number four. Arkadiusz Milik. Beautiful pictures here. Full time 2 0. What else can we speak about, uh, ragazzi miei? We understand. Uh, luckily, hopefully, then. Hopefully, you understand what I mean. Otherwise, oh, disaster. Eh? <clears throat> Do you want to see some heat maps? Do you want to discuss something that I totally forgot? Because uh, there are probably some things I forgot. Did the game start from Milan? Oh, Juventus women is winning 1-0. There are still three minutes to play. That's an important game. Huh? Oh, I hope they continue to win. At the 86th minute, goal from Ariana Caruso. They just scored like one minute ago. Grande, 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 grande. Grande, grande, grande. Uh, and Genoa Milan just started. Uh, Everyone should support Dragujin today. Eh, Farsa Dragujin. I don't know if uh, he's playing also Connie the Winter. Let me check the teams. I can tell you. Eh? Both teams are playing with uh, Genoa. Martinez in the goal. Vasquez, Dragujin, Bani and the Winter. The Winter as well. Then Haps, Frendrup, Malinowski, Sabelli, Gudmundsson and Torsby. Because uh, he's injured or I don't know what he has. Uh, Retegui, so Retegui will not be there for Milan. Menon, <coughs> Florenzi, Tio, Tomori, Teo Hernandez, Musa, Adli, Reinders, Okafor, Jovic, and Chukweze. Where is Leao? He's on the bench. Mamma mia, Fantasy League will not be good. But hopefully they lose. Hopefully they lose. Uh, Beppe, my um, apology form is on the first page of Gazeta. No, you're, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. C can you please send me the link? You are kidding me. I don't believe that. Is that true? I want to see the apology form. Oh, I'm, I'm here, Paul. Ah, Paul, 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 Paul. I didn't watch the pages today. Oh my God, it's true. It's true. It's true. Look at that. So our friend, AJ. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, disaster. How is it possible? Hey, give me the pictures. Die, show me the pictures. Mamma mia, disaster. Here, mama, young Gazzetta dello Sport. AJ, famous, he's famous, he's famous. Fantastic, fantastic, congratulations. I hope Gazzetta del Sport will, uh, will also fill in the form. <laughs> fantastic. Oh, that makes me happy. That makes me really happy. He made it, he made it. 
Uh, I'm very angry with Pirlo that he's not giving the chance to Facundo Gonzalez. Uh, the problem is uh, Mark. The problem with Pirlo is uh, he needs to give himself a chance, a chance to stay in a. Uh, in, uh, on the bench because otherwise he will not stay long ragazzi when, when you are thinking of when your job is at risk you don't think about Facundo you don't think about uh, whoever you want you are thinking about your own ass uh, and by the way apparently I didn't know but uh, Facundo started today what was the result did they win did they win or not Sampdoria because uh, you can start and then uh, I'm curious Sampdoria today 1-1 one, one. Against Ascoli Pua. Uh, and they even scored with a penalty. Uh, how many points do you have in Fantasy League? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I don't want to discuss about these kind of things. I'm not happy. I'm not happy about Fantasy League. Uh, And today will not get better because uh, Leao is not even playing. Disaster. Disaster. Let me check. Live round. Uh, I have at the moment as we speak. So 330. No, I am position 333. Position 333, which is bad. I never started that bad. Pa. Disaster. Total points? I don't know. I don't know. I can't find it. Uh, Let me check. I have... Ah, here I have. 495. It's better. 495. Beppe out, seriously. But uh, today I will have 9 points with Sommer. 11 points with Bijol. Five points with uh, Di Marco. Cambiaso, he played uh, one minute. Uh, so he had one point. A disaster. Anyway, uh, let's go back to a uh, derby della Mole. Juve against Torino. A grande Ram team. 68 is good. 62 is good, David. Oh, I'm bad. You're good, guys. Wait, Pogba's official report spoke of youth hormone, a more, par a more powerful and modern androgen of testosterone that the World Anti-Doping Agency has banned for a decade. I have no idea what it means. Ragazzi, I started to be a lawyer, uh, a trader, a trainer, uh, an accountant. Yeah, I have to be also a doping analyst or a doctor. I have no idea what it means. What does that? What does that even mean? Youth hormone, a more powerful and modern androgen of testosterone that the world anti-doping has banned for a decade. Boo! I have no idea what it means. Don't care. Well, I don't care. If, if they are telling me that uh, it's wrong and uh, then I tell you, okay, good, uh, let him play back. But no, Andre, I care. Of course I care because uh, <laughs> he's a fantastic player. Oh, just one thing. <laughs> I saw a lot of wrong translations. Wrong translations because I saw that an Allegri and Elkan and uh, Scannavino, they spoke about Pogba and uh, I saw in English a lot of people translating on a human pers perspective, we are disappointed. So we are disappointing in from a human uh, point. But it comes from the word siamo dispiaciuti, but it doesn't mean disappointed. Disappointed means, you know, the person did something wrong and you are disappointed in him. So you see, you are looking a bit down on him because he did something bad. But siamo dispiaciuti su un livello umano means totally different, uh, something different. It's not blaming or finger pointing. It's more like we are sorry for him. We feel sorry from a human perspective. Attention, because I saw a lot of translation, nearly all the 
Italian English translation wrong. Eh, it changed everything, yeah? Because if the president of Juve, if the owner of Juve, if the coach of Juve are saying I'm disappointed in him <coughs> or I am sorry for him, it changed everything, yeah? I felt bad for him, yeah. Feeling bad for someone, yeah. That's uh, that's the thing. Oh, it changed everything. Just I wanted to a point that, unfortunately, only 178 Juventini will know it. Um, but no, but that's important because it, it, the context matter a lot, huh? In that case, but a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, oh, just that. Then I read the translation in English and people are doing a fantastic job. But if you are writing, we are disappointing on, <laughs> you know, it can even be uh, that they are disappointed, but that's not what they said. Okay. Uh, no penalty given to Genoa, but that's a, that's a fact. Huh? Something more or not, my friends. Oh, I got to but make me a pleasure. I know I'm complaining. I, today I'm complaining. No. I, today I'm complaining. We are losing. We are 600 persons. We are winning. We are 200 persons. The videos of yesterday, mamma mia, disaster. The first one I did a big video, good video, 1,600 views. Usually we have like 4,000 views. I like, ah, see, where are you? I don't know where you are. Mamma mia, what a disaster. What a disaster. What a disaster. So, ma, so thank you for you, huh, because you are here, of course. Huh? But maybe someone that will watch in replay. Oh, I got see, also during the week, help me. Otherwise, uh, we will close the, so the, the channel soon. No, we are spoiled. Yeah, yeah, spoiled, spoiled. But then uh, we'll close the channel, because then uh, how, we, how can we survive? Um, the heat map. Which, which heat map? Of a player of... Uh, Ah, oh, damn team. Exams are more important, of course. Uh, average. Uh, what do you want? Heat maps from who? From a player or from uh, the team? If you're looking at uh, this is no, but, ah, but that's not a good game. This is not a good game. This was a uh, Juventus women. So here, here is the good game. Heat map. So here, the full heat map, both teams. Here is only Juve. So Juventus, you see it, huh? four minutes, five minutes. Super low. We play only on the low. The only one here is Weston McKenney and Wea that are trying on the right for the rest. After 10 minutes, nothing happens. You see the density here in the back and then here we start a bit at the 23rd minute we start to go a bit more up but not dangerous huh? and then we are filling in also this part a bit more so you see a, a crescendo juve you see a real juve in crescendo more than minute. Ah, 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 ah my foot what did i do ah ah Ah, because I was doing like this. I was doing like this with my foot and I went a bit too... Ooh. No, it's not a dead foot. I was doing like this with my foot and I went a bit too much. Mamma mia. I will go with uh, Federico Gatti and, uh, and Dusan Vlaovic uh, in the J Medical. Ah! Uh, no, if you say muscle injury to Allegri, will be pissed off in the press conference. He will start screaming against everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get the answer to that on Apple Watch. So, um, you see, but anyway, here you're not present. <laughs> if you want to be dangerous and you're not here, then you have a problem. Second half with the presence of Milik, you, you see, oppa, here we start to fill in. Uh, at least we start to be present a bit more up. You see the difference? Uh, big difference. Huh? Look, first half. Second half. You see the difference? First half, second half. Big, 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 big difference. Big difference. I like the, look, McKenny. McKenny's performance 
full game. You see, up, down, up, down, but really on the, you see, more as a wing to give support, what I told you. Huh? Here's when he's covering Gatti, you see? That's where he's covering Gatti, that's where he's uh, in his natural position, and that's when he's giving support to Wea. If you are looking at uh, Wea today, and then we will compare with Kostic, look at Wea up and down and this is what i was missing for him to be a starter at juve with gatti you see and then if you see uh gatti you see they are in a perfect combo both of them if i put kostic now you see kostic was totally diverse than um than than wea because that's wea here and that's kostic so kostic gave a lot more defensive support on the left but was a lot more presence also higher than Wea. Wea looks like he played from here to here, here to here, here to here, paying attention, not going too much up here. And you see, but more present here. Why Kostic is totally not appearing here. So, or defending and supporting and going up. That's the big difference between both. If uh, McKenny can continue there, yeah with the only problem that at a certain moment you have to uh, also sub Wea and we don't have a lot of right side players so if you can at a certain moment put Cambiaso in for Wea on the right side then McKenny could, could potentially play there yeah he did well he did well you know it uh, as long as he's doing well i will be objective and saying that he did well is he my favorite uh, footballer ever no is he the player that i think that could have been present in the best juve ever no absolutely no but for the juve that we are watching from the beginning of the season fair fair play to him fair play to him and i'm happy yeah huh? i can only be happy i don't care that i'm wrong or not but um Pep, I like the match of Moise. Yeah, we said it. I feel, uh, yeah, but yeah, he's underrated uh, because today that control of ball was fantastic. Yeah? Every time that he's fighting with the back on the goal, chest, control the ball, keeping the ball there, did well. Oh, ragazzi, I will watch uh, Genoa Milan. I will watch Genoa Milan and uh, I give you a good evening. Good evening, like uh, Emery is saying. I will eat as well it's because time. I'm hungry. Look at that. Santiago Ramirez Porras is back. He's back on back. He just subscribed on the channel. And you know that also this is extremely appreciated. Okay. Um, let me check how much we are. Because, you know, I fought so much to cross the 27,500. We finally did today. Luckily, but it was like uh, two weeks that I, we were that close, that close, that close, and we couldn't reach them. So now, finally, finally, we did it. But uh, wow, it has been difficult. And look, on the 4th of October, we are the 7th. We were at 89. And, and you know, it didn't grow. Huh? While usually, especially with match days and so on, you're growing faster. Mamma mia, it took so long to get over this 27.5. Hopefully we will, we will continue. Dan Davenport. Thank you. Grazie, my friend. Grazie, my friend. Did I forget someone to say uh, uh, Gatti is a player you can't have a grudge? No, we saw from Rad. We saw all the messages. Huh? I didn't forget anybody. So let me say thank you to Dan Davenport becoming a member of the channel. Grandissimo, Dan. Really appreciate it. Luca, Beppe is a legend. No, I'm not a legend. Um, Del Piero is a legend, not me. Demon, I said it, huh? Yeah, I will be live, not here, but I will be live on the Juventus YouTube channel. YouTube, and we will show the game. Ah, yeah, maybe I didn't uh, explain it well. So, I uh, will show the game. Not only watch along and uh, I watch the game and I tell. No, no, we will show the game if the technical uh, things are working. With you. And, but I will show the game. You will watch the game. And I will comment watching the game. Ah, yeah, I forgot to tell that. Maybe I had to say it better. No, no, voila. I show the game, you watch the game together with me, and I comment and I tell you what is happening. It will be uh, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Now it's here. 
how, how <laughs> wait, let me change it. Innanzitutto bisogna fare i complimenti ai ragazzi. Uh, Alex del Piero. Ok. Uh, like Real Madrid is doing their YouTube and Twitch. No, no, because Antonio, Real Madrid is not showing the game. They are filming uh, Ancelotti. They are filming the coach. Uh, they are filming the coach. I will show the game, the game, the game. Should I do that in the next press conference live? Could be. Could be. I translate uh, with uh, that face. My opinion on the Zerbi. I don't see him at Juve. Uh, first of all, because he's a Milan fan <laughs> and he doesn't like Juve. He hates Juve. I respect that, huh? at least he's honest. Huh? So first of all, he will uh, he hates you. Then in football, you hate, you don't hate. Uh, you, you can forgive. Uh, you can be uh, an Inter fan going to Juve. You can be a Juve fan going to Inter, whatever. So everything changed really fast in football and you forget and, uh, and whatever. Sarri, look at Sarri for example, perfect example. But uh, no, he has a philosophy of, of Milan uh, that I don't see immediately at Juve. Uh, it's a good coach it's a good coach but I also think that the English football is perfect for him English football is perfect for him a lot of open spaces he can go he can take the ball possession uh, uh, in, Engl in England is the, he found the perfect football in Italy it's a bit more difficult in Italy it's a bit more difficult um what I think, what I think. So no, I, I found this. He found this spot there with open spaces. You see it huh? when when there are some teams that are pushing a bit in terms of a bit more tactical intelligent. He's lost, but he needs to grow there. But I think it's a really fantastic, great coach. Not my favorite one. Then it comes to Juve. I will be his biggest fan, of course. I will be. I will say that Zerbi is the best coach uh, on the planet. But today, not not a big fan. Um, not yet. Uh, Thomas, th no, there will not be any more lives on the channel of uh, Romeo Agresti, but probably there will be a recorded video or, uh, or or something. So we are working, but I don't know if it will be tomorrow or uh, on Monday. There will be an English content on the channel of uh, Romeo, but not live. Live Thursday with Romeo on my channel, but also there. Uh, we need to improve also there, huh? uh, doing better. The last one, I really liked it. Um, but uh, yeah, on the channel of Romeo, probably content, video. Great coach, have to win something. But no, yeah, yes, yes, have to win something. But on the other side, he's in the beginning of his career. So you can't just, he will win. And he's also, don't forget that he's coaching Brighton. Huh? He's not coaching Manchester City or, and at, in Italy was coaching uh, uh Sassuolo, so give him also time before but he's a good coach already. And then you have some coaches, their entire career they did with small teams uh, and they did a fantastic job. They didn't receive the opportunity to do with big uh, big teams, so I don't know. Um, oh, that's it, ragazzi, I will eat, I will watch Milan. That at the moment, let me check the score, he's still doing 0-0 after 23 minutes, grazie. Arrivederci, see you tomorrow. Ciao.